There's real poetry in the real world. Science is the poetry of reality. We can do science, and with it, we can improve our lives. The National School's Science and Technology Fair 2014 took place at an outdoor venue for the first time. The Derrick Olcott Square was blessed with good weather for the entire three days of the fair. We head back to the square for our continued conversation with the students participating in the 2014 Science Fair. Kesson Samuel of Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School spoke with us earlier, but is back this time to talk about a game that her team has invented. It's the Logic Gates game, true or false? Here is Kesson to explain. My name is Kesson Samuel. I am from Viewfort Comprehensive A-Level Department. My game is a Logic Gates game and it's based on truth tables. Um, it's called true or false because I use the values, the binary values of zero and one represented by true as one and false being zero. Can you explain to us your hypothesis? Okay, well, the game is, is aimed to help reinforce the topic of logic gates because it's a topic which students sometimes have difficulty with grasping. So therefore my game helps to you know, help the student like, understand the topic better and just as an avenue for them to practice it a little bit more. Talk to us about the experiment as you went forward. How did you execute this? Basically, to play the game, you'd have to spin a wheel to choose one of the gates. And I'm testing the five basic gates, not, and, or, nand, and no. So the gates are color-coded. And would be blue, or is red, nand is green, and no is yellow. So you first spin a wheel to choose one of these um, four gates. Then you'd fill out a truth table. The truth tables, there are six of them in order of difficulty. Some of them would have inputs of A and B. Some would have in inputs of A, B and C. And you'd fill for the output. So um, you f you, after you choose the gate, you fill out your truth table. According to how cur the accuracy of filling out your truth table, you'd be rewarded with a color-coded star. So since the, the gates are color-coded, the stars are also color-coded. However, for and and or gates, you get a one star since they're the simpler gates. And for and and or gates, you get two stars. The first player to get four stars of the same color would win the game. My name is Edgy Joseph. I attend the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and I created a biopesticide. We created a biopesticide. All right, Edgy, can you tell us what exactly is this project about? Um, in St. Lucia, we depend heavily on our agricultural sector and usually pests, of course, is a problem. It's a worldwide thing, not only here in the Caribbean. And usually pesticides, conventional pesticides are used, but they are not very environmentally friendly. So we decided to create a biopesticide which is as effective as conventional pesticides but it is healthy to the environment, it's more organic and um, it's cheaper. So it, we can produce it instead of importing all these chemicals which is not good for us. So how did, did you decide what material to use for this experiment? Yes, we cayenne peppers contain a molecule called capsaicin which we extracted from it and we use cayenne peppers which are locally grown. Explain to us the process of extracting it and what did you find out? What, what is your conclusion from the experiment? I concluded that um, capsaicin can be used as a biopesticide. It is as effective and it is more, it's organic, it's environmentally friendly and more economical. Um, can you talk to us about its effectiveness? Did you, were you able to test its effectiveness? Yes, we tested its effectiveness. We, when we extracted the capsaicin, we diluted it into six free concentrations, 10%, 40%, 60%, and we... Grow some, we grew some tomato plants in which we introduced white flies and aphids and caterpillars in which they were able to repel and kill all these things. My name is Dena Ogis and I'm from Vifort Comprehensive Secondary School Campus A. All right, Dana, you have a very interesting project entitled Milk Jewelry. Can you explain to us what this is about? Animal-based milk contains a protein, co contains molecules of a protein called casein. When you heat the milk and you add it, and you add an acid to it, the molecules reorganize in a long chain, forming clumps before them curds. So we remove the curds from the mixture and we mold them into these balls to form our jewelry. Was it easy making a jewelry? Yes, it was. It was not a difficult method. 
and now I, I noticed some of them are colored and so on. How did you get a color in there? Well, we added food coloring to it to form our creative jewelry. Um, was it a difficult process? No, it was not a difficult process. We, we did it as a team, so we helped each other. So is this something that people can do at their homes? They can make their own jewelry from milk? Yes, it is. <laughs> is there a business opportunity there for you and your school? Yes, but we have not figured out how, how are we going to go about marketing our products. Well, I'm sure you have a business class who can do the marketing plan for you. Yes, that is true. And um, once you've made that jewelry, how, how durable is it? Can it last a long time? Yes, it can last a long time because we dipped it in a, in a chemical called formaldehyde. It causes, to, it causes, it causes it to be um, long-lasting and durable. Good afternoon, my name is Dylan William. The name of my school is Corum Secondary and today our project is the smartphone microscope. I am Tyra Roseman. This project actually came about when students were taking time to watch into a compound microscope at our school. So we came up with a cheaper and efficient microscope, which is the smartphone microscope. With this smartphone microscope, we have an advantage because students could actually take out a picture of the actual specimen. Also, the students are able to view the slides from the smartphone microscope so no one will miss out on class. If they're absent, they will be able to get the pictures using WhatsApp or emails. We asked um, certain companies for donations so we could actually build a microscope. Yeah. But if it was to be built by us, it would cost us originally about $60. Now what material did you use to build a microscope? We use a wooden base, then we drill in three holes, we add our washers, then our nuts, then we add our bolts, and we add a specimen stage. Science is the poetry of reality. We can do science, and with it, we can improve our lives. There is a lot more to come on Calabash TV. And please note that we will post pictures and video of what you see featured on our Facebook page, so please like us. And also you can tune in to our YouTube channel for the videos. They will be posted not too long from now. Still ahead, the flooding from the 2013 Christmas Eve trough has inspired some solutions for poultry farmers after many birds perished in the flood. Stay tuned for that science project. <laughs>